You're listening to the Optimal Performance Podcast. The OPP is brought to you by Natural Stacks, makers of 100% natural and open source supplements designed to help you live optimal. For more information on how to build optimal mental and physical performance into your life, go to naturalstacks.com. Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Optimal Performance Podcast. It's me, Sean McCormick, and on today's episode, we have Dr. T.Q. Collins. Dr. T.Q. Collins, we just call him Q, is a researcher and a scientist at the Center for Deuterium Depletion. What you need to know about deuterium is that it is a, a one of two forms of hydrogen. The hydrogen that we know is called protium. The other type of hydrogen that has an extra neutron to go with the proton in the nucleus makes it deuterium. It's heavier and it's larger. And when we consume foods that are heavy in deuterium, when we consume water that's heavy in deuterium, when we eat certain ways, when we don't move enough, when we don't breathe effectively enough, when we don't sleep effectively enough, we build up deuterium. And this deuterium, which is a fairly obscure test to do, can show how when this deuterium enters into the mitochondria uh, during the process of ATP, uh, we create a metabolic water. And if you're high, heavy in deuterium, and you're not depleting deuterium effectively when you go to sleep, uh, then what happens is is it basically gums up your mitochondria, slows you down, and ages you prematurely. It also uh, can lead to cancers and overgrowths. And so one at one point in today's episode, uh, Q, Dr. T.Q. Collins, who we call Q, Q, I ask him, because I've heard him say it before, in five years, cancer will be optional. Not to say that this is going to cure cancer, but we can eat in a way. We can drink deuterium depleted water. We can get enough sunlight and sleep. We can effectively deplete our own deuterium naturally, endogenously, in a way that will make it so that these overgrowths and cancers and these these sort of um, DNA um, going haywire can be absolutely prevented. This is a fairly provocative um, content in today's episode because with claims like that about uh, the future of cancer, we become to understand uh, some science that that we didn't know previously, and it really does explain a lot. Uh, there there is something very critical to this, and it just so happens that I had my deuterium tested through a breath test and a saliva test. Um, to go through my actual levels of uh, an ability to deplete my own deuterium to rid my body of this hydrogen that is heavier and muckier and gummier. Uh, and uh, I didn't do so hot. I didn't do as bad. Apparently, I'm better than 80% of uh, the folks that they test, but um, I need to make some changes too, and uh, I'm excited to keep experimenting. I think you're really going to love this episode. It is highly informative. It is unlike anything you've ever heard, and I hope you love it. But before we jump into the actual podcast, there's a couple of quick announcements. Number one, Natural Stacks is releasing a pair of CBD products that are already very popular. Uh, This You can actually pre-order these CBD products. Uh, They're full-spectrum CBD. Uh, There is an Omega CBD and a Dream CBD. The Omega CBD is full spectrum relief, and the Dream CBD is for sleep. If you've listened to this podcast before, you know that I'm a fan of CBD, and it's something that I use pretty frequently. And uh, you can count on Natural Stacks to do the hard work to source the absolute highest quality products. The way that the way that we do with all of our supplements and all of our nootropics so that if you're looking for the right CBD, this is it. Uh, And uh, I have not sampled it yet, but I am looking forward to doing so. So head to naturalstacks.com slash CBD and um, check it out. Also, Chiefs for Men, uh, owned by the Natural Stacks gang, Go to chiefsformen.com and use the code word OPTIMAL for uh, 25% off your first online order. There's deodorant and soap, and I use a face wash uh, every morning that uh, really does wake you up. 
As always, here's the appeal. Here's the ask. If you like this stuff, if you enjoy these podcasts and you like me and the way that I do things, please let me know. Give me some feedback. Sean at optimalperformance.com. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. Subscribe. It's a small little thing uh, to subscribe to a podcast that you like, but uh, it means a ton to us. So go ahead and subscribe to the optimalperformance.com. And there's more coming. There's more great episodes with cutting edge people to bring you the absolute most pertinent information to help you live their most optimal life. And uh, I'm really excited to bring it to you. You can follow me at Coach Sean McCormick on Instagram. And uh, yeah, let's dig right into it. Without further ado, Dr. TQ Collins for the Center for Deuterium Depletion. You're listening to the Optimal Performance Podcast, and I'm your host, Sean McCormick. It's the OPP. I'm a performance coach, a wellness entrepreneur, a blogger, a speaker, a biohacker, and it's my privilege to bring to you the leading experts in the field of performance. So let's dig right in. And we're here with Dr. Q, who is the principal scientist for the Center for Deuterium Depletion. Dr. Q, welcome to the Optimal Performance Podcast. Oh, fantastic, Sean. I really appreciate the invitation. So I start with the same, com- the same question with every guest. And uh, right now we're both in Pacific Standard Time, so it's 1240 uh, in the afternoon. I would love to know what you have put into your body today. What have you consumed so far today? <laughs> no, it's, it's funny. I'm one of those people are, that is an intermittent faster. So today I've had a, a glass of, 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 of 65 ppm deuterium depleted water, 16 ounces. And I'll probably start eating around four or five o'clock. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's a long fast. Do, um, do you eat in a window? Do you start at four? And then when do you stop? You know, it's really, yeah. I mean, it started out as intermittent fasting, but I, I'm a person that fasts a lot and, and uh, fine eating is not something that I'm uh, really into much. <laughs> I went on a 72 day fast last year. Uh, this year I've done two, already done a seven day fast. And then probably, you know, my birthday turns in February. And so I'll probably do another 60 day fast after that. So I, I fast. A lot. Yeah. yeah. When you're old guy, you got to catch up. Wow. I mean, that's not that common. I mean, that's, that's really, that's really pushing, pushing that, uh, that, that fasting period. I mean, I know it's been done, but that's something that you do fairly regularly. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I like it. I, I, um, I have a shout out to uh, Raymond out at the OKT is his group out there. He's a very leader in fasting and he's really convinced me and I do quite a bit of it. I, I like it. It kind of makes up for, you know, 60 plus years of not doing things right. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's phenomenal. So l- let's, Let's dig into, because you said that you've already had just uh, 16 ounces of deuterium depleted water. Um, Let's start by explaining exactly what deuterium depleted water is. Oh, very cool. Okay, when you look at it, you know, when you look at your water, and everybody knows water is hydrogen and oxygen, H2O. But what we mostly don't understand is, is that there's two or three different kind of hydrogens. We know about Tritium, that's the, the hydrogen that makes atomic bombs that really doesn't exist anymore on this planet unless it's man-made. We have deuterium, which is the isotope of hydrogen, which is twice as big. It has an extra neutron, so it's twice as big, twice as heavy. And then we have hydrogen, which is called protium, which is the one we're always used to talking about. So deuterium depleted water is physically, we take this regular water that you drink every day, and we take out of it the deuterium. We do that by doing on a 70 foot tower that's under pressure and we distill it thousands and thousands of times. And then we capture, because as you can think about it, the protium is lighter, therefore it's gonna kind of like float at the higher, at higher elevations. So we capture it, we freeze each fraction at certain heights and we capture the amount of protium that's there, the ratio that's there. And so as you go further up the column, just like you go further from a mountain, you have water that has less deuterium in it. And so the one I'm drinking has 65 parts per million 
as opposed to 155 parts per million that exist in ground waters in the end of the ocean. So let's let's explain to folks as as clearly and because we've talked before, you and I, we've had we've had conversations about how we can how we can deliver this information to people in an accessible way. And I'm going to take a crack at it, and then you tell me how close I am. Basically, deuterium is hydrogen with an extra atom that makes it more heavy. That when consumed, or when your body is uh, when your body has too much deuterium, which most of our bodies do, the mitochondria use that deuterium, and it basically gums up our energy sources because the water is actually bigger, or the, the molecule is actually bigger and heavier. And so the deuterium that we have in our body, which is naturally occurring, when there's too much of it, it slows us down in, at a cellular level. Okay, now that I've butchered it, please, please set, set, set me straight. I'm, I'm going to give you an honorary PhD just for that explanation. <laughs> nice. That was, awesome. that was awesome. So, yeah, if you, it's, that is a very good way to explain it. This, this, this deuterium is something that naturally occurs, we have in our body. As we get older, our ability to deplete it, to get rid of it goes down. And we'll talk about a lot of reasons for that. But this deuterium, this element, gets into your mitochondria and when it gets into your mitochondria mitochondria has thousands of these little nanomotors that's why it's just imagine be thousands of windmills that are turning five thousand revolutions per minute and every time they turn they make atp once and it uses those hydrogens from your food to make that atp not from the water but from the food and then so once you get this deuterium and it hits this windmill it breaks it and that that windmill is totally destroyed and can't make ATP anymore. So it's really that simple. And like you said, gumming it up or throwing sand in an engine or hitting something with a hammer, that's what people should picture it as. And it's that your body really gets rid of it. So this happens very few times, but as we start eating certain foods, the chance of that happening goes up and up and up. In conversations that we've had previously to this, you have said that the potential you and I'll say exactly the way that you said it because it it blew my mind. Uh, you said that the goal that you guys have is to make cancer optionable in the next five years. Yes. Can you can you explain? <laughs> I don't big words, huh? Big words. It is sensational. And and also I understand that that because we're talking about the food that we eat and the way that our bodies function at the most fundamental level is really what what where we're going with this. Um, can you illuminate that that goal for us? Explain how that how that might be possible. Well, thank you. Uh, actually, we even as a company, we have three major goals that we're doing over the next five years, and I'll see how, and I'll tell you how that fits into our, our our ultimate vision of making cancer a choice. And one, our goal is to ch to actually help a, a million people that have cancer and other uh, metabolic diseases to get better outcomes uh, with standard of care, so we can make their standard of care work better and actually work for them. So instead of all these bad side effects, the chemo actually does what it's supposed to do. Uh, the second thing that we're doing is we're going to uh, help uh, uh, 10,000 doc. we're gonna train 10,000 doctors around the world in deterrent depletion so they can help their patients. And then the third thing, like we talked about, it is to get the knowledge to the point that we understand how cancer works and how it works at the molecular level. So the information is there, clear enough, easy enough to use that people can decide to do it or not to do it and therefore prevent cancer and other metabolic diseases within their life. And so it's really, really, and when we come down to deuterium, that it come, it, we, it's so amazing. I've been doing this for more than 35 years. It's so amazing how simple it is. Uh, Laszlo Boris, who is our chief scientist, more than 20 years ago, wrote the first paper that said 
cancer was a metabolic disease. It was 20 years ago. And it's taken us this long. We've gone through a lot of different ways of trying to find this out, but we've gone through molecular, through molecular mechanisms, through, metabol through different metabolic pathways. We come with this really simple, simple thing of it but simply being about the ratio of deuterium to hydrogen. And hydrogen does three things when it comes to cancer. And it's the three fundamental things that every cancer patient has to fight. One is this deuterium is the thing that feeds cancer cells and makes them grow. And once we understand that, we, it's the easiest thing to really get our hands around it. So when we talk about keto and we talk about carbs and sugar, it's not the sugar that's the problem. It's the hydrogens that's on the sugar. Hmm. So the sugar is just the boat that gets the soldiers there. So if it has these deuterium on it, that's really what feeds the cancer. So that's one of them. The second thing that this does, deuterium, if you think about an Etch-a-Sketch or, or excuse me, an erector set, and you're putting things together and all these things are held together by screws, right? You, you, you put screws in something to get it a certain three dimensional to get it to look like something. If you want to build a house, you've got to make the house roof look like it's supposed to look. You got to make the walls straight. Well, if they gave you screws or nails that were twice as big, hydrogen compared to deuterium, and you try to connect these two things, it would make those angles different. So ultimately that house, that beautiful house that you tried to make would look like a shack. And it looked like it was a falling, because it's all funky. It's kind of misshapen. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, that's really what deuterium does in your DNA. It gets into your DNA and that pretty ladder forming, beautiful thing we always think of DNA starts instead to be misshapen to be open, to be big, to be gnarly. And that's what cancer is, this gnarly looking DNA that you cannot turn off. So it keeps replicating because these big mild, this big, this big element of deuterium is now inside there and it can't fold properly. So it just keeps, it keeps multiplying, multiplying and multiplying. And that's what cancer is. It's just, it's just a, a normal cell that won't stop growing. Right. And because of deuterium. And the third thing deuterium does, it feeds bacteria, viruses, and parasites. They require deuterium, just like a cancer cell, to grow. And so that's the reason you see so many cancer patients dying, or even diabetes patients too, dying of bacterial infections and viral infections, and not necessarily of the cancer. And why so many people have conflated seeing high levels of bacteria and high levels of virus to think that cancer is caused by bacteria and viruses. It's just that they happen at the same time because they use the same fuel. Hmm. So those three things there, we understand it. We understand it very well. Like I said, we published over a hundred papers on this subject and other, on other subjects on, the, on metabolism. This is peer reviewed papers. So by, understanding that and we're delving down to really how to understand those three things, the relations between those three things and the term within by next year, we should have understand it so clearly that we can state it so simply and so matter of factly with such support that I will give it to you, Sean, on a platter and say, here's the way it works. Please read it. Set a sixth grade education. You don't need to have a PhD. Here it is. Use this to protect yourself. And that's that simple. And we, we tested my deuterium, which I am, I'm excited to dig into. Um, not quite yet, but I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm disappointed in myself. I'll be honest, <laughs> Dr. Q, because I, you know, I eat keto and I drink spring water and um, I'm, I'm high fat. I mean, we could talk about some of the other things that I do that are, that are maybe contributing to my, my inability or my inefficiency to deplete my own deuterium, but we want to get to that in a second. I want to make the connection for folks between the, the, the way the deuterium works in our body, the way that, de that deuterium helps a young person grow is the, same, is the same sort of mechanism that makes cancers grow. Um, 
is that am I is that a, is that a logical connection between the use of deuterium of deuterium in the body? And before you answer that, would you mind moving your microphone a little bit closer to your face, just a little bit? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's better. Cool. Do I have that right? No, I, I love it, man. I love your way your brain works. Uh, yeah, when you look at this, it's really deuterium is not a toxin. Uh, you know, so we need to get that out of our minds. It's necessary for who we are. It's necessary. It keep it makes Sean Sean. It makes Q Q. It, you know that it makes your DNA work. It makes you it turns it on. It turns it off. All those things we think about epigenetics. It's all being controlled by the ratio of hydrogen to deuterium that's in your food, not by the fact that you ate a banana or steak, but what the hydrogens and deuterium are on that banana or steak to turn that DNA on and off. And so yes, it is so important deuterium when you're growing fast. I said. Uh, just a, a couple of minutes ago that it opens your DNA and allows that DNA to multiply. That is growth. That's what you're going through when you're a neonate, when you're a baby, when you're a toddler, when you're a teenager. And you see the incredible growth spurts when a, you know, a baby can gain 30 pounds in two years and go from seven inches to 21 inches and we don't worry about it. That is cool. That's regulated growth that's supposed to happen. They go through pu pu puberty. That's again, a growth spurt where you see a lot of the deuterium. It is necessary. Your body's able to handle it and everything is fixed to use those levels of deuterium to your benefit, right? To your benefit. Now, again, once you're past that stage, the deuterium, what will happen with those levels of deuterium is you start to get fat instead. You don't grow taller, you grow fatter. And then if you keep it up, you go from fatter to diabetes, to getting tired, to fatigue, to cancer, and you know, early death. That's just, a, that's just the way it works. So, but when you're younger, you can use it to turn. It is great, it is fantastic. And if we even, that's the next thing we're gonna do, can learn how to use even that information we can even make younger kids even better and stronger and faster. That's a that's a, a mother of our pet projects that we that we do look at a lot. Would that be through like deuterium optimization or yeah, wow. It really is through and we think it's deuterium optimization to optimize growth and optimize growth of brain, to do all these connections. It's really, you know, it's it's nothing that it, what I really like to say is all the things we we're doing have been discovered before. I mean, we don't try to say that this is new stuff. We simply tell people that we're able to fine tune the things that they do so now they can control it better. So yeah, we can talk about early age development. We can talk about the ability, when you're, why some kids read, why some kids don't. We can talk about how viruses work, uh, how antivirus, you know, the, the community of fighting between the pro-virus people and anti-virus people and explain you know, with don't argue, don't yell. This is how the science works. Now let's decide how to get that together as a people and as a culture. So this is simply fundamental, fundamental to science is all we talk about. Why is, why is this not common knowledge? Yeah, I think, well, you know, it, it, and I agree with you, man. It was a, the first Nobel Prize was given for this in 1938. So. Right. And there's been four Nobel Prize given for what we do. And I really believe, again, I will always make this plug. I think Laszlo Boros and Gabor Shamali will get the Nobel Prize uh, uh, for what they've discovered in this because it is so fundamental between what, what Laszlo's done with metabolism uh, and Paul Chu, who, we just, who, who actually died of pancreatic cancer about four months ago, which was one of our main people that helped found, uh, help this direction of what we're doing. You know, it, it is so fundamental that it's simple that it's, you know, and I'm one of those people, I have two PhDs, and it pissed me off to this day <laughs> that I went through all this stuff, and literally a kindergarten could understand, yeah. a kindergarten could understand what this works with. It's so simple that it scares people how simple it is. It scares you, because it's, not, you, you, you start to think, what do I have to do? And we already exercise better, sleep better eat better. We always heard that, but now we can actually measure it and say, this is what you have to do. And it's all about this. And that's what I'm so excited about is our diagnostics, because for the first time, we can actually measure 
it in you, measure what you can deplete, and tell you where you're going to head if you don't, by just getting certain numbers. And it's just so exciting. I mean, you can essentially, we're able to, through these diagnostics or tests, we should say, are able to tell you that you can stay as young and as healthy as you can for as long as you can by keeping these values within this range. That's pretty cool. Really cool. That's very cool. I mean, and especially for fans of high performance, biohackers, yeah. you know, people who, you know, are, are concerned with longevity and want to understand their biology better, you know, like um, to know that, to know the reason why keto works, to have an understanding of that it's not necessarily gluten or grain. It's not the cheese its themselves that are, that are making you sick and inflamed and giving you, um, you know, a uh, uh, gut imbalance and making you moody. It's the deuterium that's in these products that are really high that we haven't ever really talked about, that it's not something that we even consider, like what the hell is deuterium anyway? And that that is really at the, at the most fundamental level, that's what's going on. So instead of high, high grains, um, whole grains, uh, bacon and olive oil, like I've heard that Dr. Barosh, uh, is, is a, is a, is a, I, I mean, I've, I mean, I've heard it a couple of times that that's basically all he eats is, can you tell us a little bit about a little bit further for all the keto heads that are listening right now? Why is it, why is it working for them and make that connection between the, the, the keto diet um, the paleo diet to a certain extent, the bulletproof diet, and, um, and the fact that that, that, that that is low in deuterium. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I think it's cool because, you know, I, I mean, I'm one of the original keto heads, so I, I stand accused and, and proud of it. So, but, you know, I've had talks with Dominic and Dominic D'Agostino and, yeah. you know, and Dave Asprey, and we, we all, we're, we're at that point. And once you, it's very, very, very simple. When an animal eats grass, grass is deuterium depleted. So this grass is deuterium depleted. That means the, that animal is deuterium depleted. Just like if you're a person that eats a low deuterium diet, that means your body is going to be deuterium depleted. Now, in this case, we're going to eat that, that, that piece of beef. And we're going to eat that piece of beef. And that beef... The, it has three things in it, proteins, carbs, and it's got fat. It so happens that the fat in your body has the hydrogens in that fat are fixed. They can't exchange. They're, they're covalently bound. So you can imagine it's, it's once they're fixed in fat, they're in the fat. And so when your body uses it and you eat that fat, it's the, what is delivered inside that fat into your mitochondria to be used in your TCA cycle, either has deuterium on it or doesn't have deuterium on it, mm. and you can't change it. So a gra if somebody is great, a big keto head, they eat a lot of fat that has low deuterium, then they're going to make great energy because their body's gonna take that and make ATP out of it without breaking their nanomotors. And they're also, the biggest thing that we really talk about, which is very important, your body also makes this metabolic water, this deuterium depleted. That's what your body makes. It spends its whole day, and I see, you know, I'm not going to say how much because when I say how much, people look at me like I'm crazy, but your body really makes about 3,000 gallons of water a day. It simply uses it and uses it and uses it till you don't see it, but you're, a, you're really just a, a nuclear-powered freaking submarine. That's what you are <laughs> nice. using this thing. You know, you're really using it all the time and you're using this water. And this water is important because that, that's, what, that's what keeps you healthy. So a keto head is going to have a lot of fat and can make a lot of metabolic water that is fantastic. That's the reason keto heads are not thirsty. We're never thirsty because we're making our own metabolic water. And that's, that's it. We, and you know we, and, and, and everybody knows on keto, you pee like a racehorse because you're making so much water, more than your body needs, that you're going to, you, you, you're peeing it out all the time. And that's what's so cool. So this connection of understanding what keto truly is, is fantastic. 
And like I said, I've, I've had, I'm going back to try to correct a lot of the things I said about keto because it's new little, it, and once we understand this and understand that it's not the ratio of fat, carbs, and, and protein like we, we thought it was that's important, it really is the composition of the ketogenic diet, like I like to call a keto therapeutic diet, that's important. So as we can tighten these things up, even to the fact that how this cow was raised to be <laughs> as mature and depleted as possible, that makes it more therapeutic for a person. And now we can use it for more than weight loss. We can start using it for cancer prevention and cancer therapy as good as, a, as, as, good as any chemotherapy. And it does work as well as chemotherapy. And it works incredibly well when you combine standard of care with this approach. Is that, is that, is there this, a similar connection, um, between deuterium, um, consuming less deuterium and, uh, treating seizures? Is, is there a, is there a correlation there too? Yes. So when you look at all of these things, there is, and I've done so many ketogenic studies, especially with glioblastoma, um, so all of the, anything that you talk about keto is a turn depleted water. They're the, the one and the same, except it's very much, it's a lot easier to be compliant with water than it is with a ketogenic diet. It, it just, it just is, especially the ketogenic diet has more and more fat in it. So yes, we use the turn depleted water for the, for epilepsy and seizures, uh, uh, both in brain tumor patients, TBI patients and also in epilepsy, uh, childhood epilepsy especially. It's just fantastic. And what it really does is a really neat thing about the during the plea of water. It kind of, it allows you to become keto adapted faster. So you will make more ketones eating the same amount of food. Now you think about this. If you're, if you get a 2.3, say if you get, you're measuring 2.3 on your ketone, on your ketone, on a ketometer, a glucometer. If you're drinking the turn the of water, that 2.3 will give you a 3.5. It, oh, makes wow. you, it makes you much more efficient because it's all about these hydrogens and deuterium that's really what keto is all about and what makes it burn fat more efficiently. So your glucose actually goes down and your ketones actually go up, which is really what you're trying to do in the, when you drink more of this deuterium-depleted water. Because what the deuterium-depleted water, it works a lot of different ways, but especially when you're talking about food, I already said it can exchange with what's in your fat, but the deuterium depleted water, having better hydrogens will exchange in those proteins and carbs that you're eating. So it makes those proteins and carbs better, better food for you, more nutritious food. So now that keto is super keto. It makes it work much, much, much better. And we always laugh. It's like people ask, well, can I have a donut? I say, yeah, you can have a donut, except you got to drink a $50 or $50 glass of, or bottle of water to match to get rid of the donut. But yeah, donuts, don't, your body doesn't care. But you, you just have to put the Band-Aids on it if you're going to do things like that. And because the deuterium depleted water is such a key component to this, because we, we, we make our own water, but obviously we have to consume water as well. And most of us, don't drink the right water. And this is going to rub me the wrong way, Dr. Q, because I drink, I thought I was drinking the right water, but we can dig into that shortly. But uh, we, we consume this deuterium depleted water. Our body uses that water and makes its own water. And when you're, when you're eating um, for ketosis and you're fat adapted and you're consuming this deuterium depleted water, it creates this environment within your body to create more water um, that is deuterium depleted, but most of us don't. Most of us drink bottled water. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> most of us are drinking tap water with that has chlorine, that has um, it's got bromine. There's a lot of they're now finding more and more that the tap water is trace amounts of opiates from people flushing their pills down the toilet, and that that water, which is high in deuterium, is just adding to this, uh, this synthesis inside of our body that's, getting, that's making us more inflamed, that's, making, that's gumming up our parts, right? No, I like that. That's it. And here's a way to think about it. If you eat properly, you eat enough, you eat properly and your body makes enough deuterium depleted water. Your bodies make this metabolic water. The water that you drink 
that you other water that you drink really is just to handle the heat that your body makes. It's really to make you cooler. That's the reason athletes have to drink a lot of water because that's what it's for. So there's nothing you can drink those other sources of water as long as because those water never gets into your cells, right? That if you if your body's making enough metabolic water, the water that you drink never gets into your cells. Huh. That's, yeah, that's the thing you have to remember. So if you look at people like I like using LeBron James who's a, a keto head, right? He drinks he, he so he's making so much water. Or Liz, or um, Liz is a good example. They're making so much water and have and they're able to deplete the tumors so much that the only thing that water that you're drinking outside is water that's cooling you off because that's what we're not reptiles, right? We cool ourselves off. We heat ourselves up. That's what water's for. And that's why our ancestors didn't drink as much water as they, they ate a diet that worked for them. They properly exercised, they were able to breathe. They slept the right amount of time. We have kind of screwed all that up. And so now we're trying to play whack-a-mole by trying to replace it with a lot of pristine water from the Fujian Islands, you know, <laughs> which yeah, it's not true. It's just that it has a lot of, and at the end of time, it really does not help. It makes it worse when you're not making the, your own molecular metabolic water. I, I bet at dinner parties, when you're having conversations yeah. with people that you've never met, Q, that they're like, what are you talking about? They must, it's, it's really hard to wrap your brain around. Not, not only the fact that we have that we make metabolic water and that's the water that our body needs the water that we actually make without drinking water is the water that we need and the water with the, that we use and the f i mean <laughs> yeah it's cool it's, i know man I, and it is funny when i go to dinner parties or anything it's like i always try to keep my mouth shut but sooner or later it happens and you know what can i say but it is so nice man i mean it's so it, what we always, including myself, all the years I went to school, we talk about how the body makes ATP. We always were focused on how your body makes ATP in the Krebs cycle. And it was great. We know 38 ATP here outside, 2 ATP. But we could, you know, in our sleeps, we can go through this in the pathway. What we were missing was every time it makes an ATP, it makes water. <laughs> And that's, that's the most amazing thing. It, they go hand in hand. So indeed, the TCA cycle main product is not ATP. That's a byproduct. It's metabolic water is what this is for. And, it's, it's, and it's, it is so hard. It's not hard, but you just have to get out of your way. I mean, like I said, I've had to get out of the way and, and appreciate I didn't know everything. And now you get this knowledge dropped on you, are like, now the story makes sense. ATP is there because you have to make ATP. I'll give you a good story. I was in Australia last or two years last year, and they were talking about these, uh, you know, crocodiles. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in America. Yeah, crocodiles. See crocodiles before. No big deal. And they were saying, oh, this, they're so big and you can't. And I looked over and I saw this little thing and I said, that's not a crocodile. And the guy looks at me and goes, no, Dr. Q. I won't do my terrible Australian accent. I'm talking about this over here. And they had this dinosaur looking crocodile that was 30 foot long, scared the frig out of me. You know, and I realized I'm 12 foot from it. I'm like, oh my God. And it's this huge thing. And he says, how much food do you think it eats today? And I was thinking, a cow once a week. <laughs> and, and he says, no, they only eat this, a chicken leg. That's all they need because they use all their ATP. They go in the sun, warm their body, and cool their body using the sun and water. Therefore, they don't waste their ATP, right? They don't waste. They make metabolic water. They're cool. And when they're time to go, they have enough energy to take you down and a cow down. But that's all they eat. Now, we, as people, we eat a lot more food, and we have to drink a lot of water to regulate our temperature, unlike a crocodile. And so it's just so, it's once you understand these things, you look around, you kind of go, oh, I get it. I get it. And, but it also makes you very, I always laugh. I love that we do so much education because it should allow you to look at the bullshit people tell you and call bullshit on them. 
because you go, the kid can't work that way. And I love that. I just love educating people and setting their minds free to give them hope that they don't have to be diseased. They don't have to be afraid of EMF. They don't have to be afraid of all these things because we can gird them with the knowledge to beat these things. And it's just very, very simple things. You are, you truly are what you eat. That's just it. You know, with information like this, that, that shakes your foundation, that really like makes you do a double take. It's a lot, you know, a lot of this is, you know, sort of inconvenient, you know, for people (laughs) to consider that, that they're doing it all wrong and that they, they need about 8% of the food that they're eating every day and that they, you know, they really need sunlight because it's an important part of this process. Uh, and, and, and the deck is stacked against us, you know, uh, the, the, you know, my, my plate from, you know, uh, the USDA, telling you to eat uh, 30% fruit and 30% grains in every, you know, in every plate and every meal that you have. It, it, obviously there's, you know, there's special interests and um, a lot of money wrapped up in that with some, you know, some pretty gnarly organizations that, that don't necessarily, they don't want to see you healthy. They want to make money off of you. Um, but, but this sort of information um, and I think that when, as you guys begin to get more and more popular and do more and more podcasts and Q, I can't wait to see you on the today show uh, talking about all of this because I think it's coming. And um, I think that it's something that we should all be open to and, and we should be willing to stretch ourselves and to make hard decisions about how we change our diets and, and, and how we live our lives. One thing that you said just re- just before I started blabbing on was about was about um, EMFs. How does how how does that um, play a part in this? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Everything fits together. So think of the as EMFs as the straw that breaks the camel's back is what I I like to look at. I'm I'm not the least bit afraid of EMFs because I'm deuterium depleted and I know how much I deplete. However, if you have high levels of deuterium just like you could be get sick from a common cold and die of a common cold, you can act, EMF can push you over that edge and break you too. So inside your cells, and one of the things I want to say before I even started that is we are at UCLA. This is not about money. This is we're not we're 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 not pushing a product. We're, that's not what we do. We we're, we're solution providers, and we can tell you what pieces of those solutions that those solutions for you to use. So I want to make people understand that it's not, we're not saying these things to make you go buy the tear depleted water or to go buy this and not buy that. No, we're just trying to lay some truths on you and let you decide. So inside your body, inside the cell, if you, the, the, our bodies are just like planets and stars and we all work the same way. It's just this, the creator, whoever did this thing, it, we're just, we represent the same thing on a larger scale. So when you look at the body, I almost think the body like a galaxy or a universe in its own. And inside we have red blood cells, we have hydrogens, we have these thousands and hundreds and millions of stars and planets inside. If you think about how the body, the body is an amazing thing. It's like we're, we're like a, a universe in the, into ourselves. We have an ocean, we have oceans, we have planets, we have stars, we have suns, we have all these things. And it's so interesting that you don't have to go, you don't have to look up in the sky, just look into yourself and you control that universe. If you can control that universe in yourself, you can help the universe you live in be better. So inside each cell, when you look into it, there's the, the gravi- gravity doesn't have effect inside the interstitial part of your cells. It's controlled by electromotive forces. That's really what gives the, the, what we think of gravity inside there. One of those electromotive forces are EMF and these kind of things. So if you have a force that's bad, this force that's bad can get into that cell and destroy that cell because it's going to take the interstitial fluids, which are made from these, again, hydrogen and deuterium. It's going to take that and that fluid inside a cell 
is not like your blood. It's really almost a metal. It's very structured. And its structure is depending on the ratio of hydrogen to deuterium, just like we talked about before. It's all it is. And so if you have too many deuteriums, that metal is going to be even thicker. And things you can imagine, trying to get a boat through a thick river doesn't work as well. It's the same thing. So this electromotive force, now when it gets into the cell, has a completely different effect on something that is thick ah. versus something that is thin. So that's why EMFs are bad. If your deuterium level is high, that means it's going to make it even worse. Got it. So it's about it's about density and conductivity rather than yes. yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. That's oh really what it is. And that's how sunlight goes. You know, when we look at sun, we eat sun. Sun is important because it takes those rays and sound rays. All these things that are around us. I mean, even bad attitudes. I said bad attitudes really do matter because that does get literally into you and changes over to a waveform that gets into your cells. So that's not a joke. Mm. Don't be around people with bad fucking attitudes. Yeah. Excuse my language. Sorry about that. You're okay. But don't get around them because it's it really is not healthy. Yeah. Be happy. It is healthy. It's not a joke. I've heard I've heard other conversations that you've had and talking about uh, how we are constantly sucking in and releasing. We're, we're we are uh, we are like a flower. We are we are like a plant. And and I know because we've had conversations before, and I know that you and I are on the same page of, you know, mind before matter and sort of the esoteric understandings of the universe and and maybe we should do a follow-up where we can really weird out on that sort of stuff but we we are constantly taking in everything vibration sunlight food water bad vibes emfs and using them in one way shape or form uh, uh they're affecting us in a way and then we emit something we you know our, our our heart our heart has an electromagnetic frequency has an electric frequency and so does our brain and so we're, we're constantly pulling stuff in and then sending stuff out. And what you're telling me is that if you are deuterium depleted, if you have less deuterium in your body, you are, you are uh, less susceptible to that sort of resonance of yucky shit that can get in and sort of stick to us. You're, the way that I'm thinking about it now is that you're like – becoming lighter, like at the cellular level, becoming, uh, elevating your vibration, elevating your, um, decreasing your density so that you can elevate so that your all of your systems internally can work on a higher level and you can just be lighter and happier and more functional and more able to deal with, um, uh, with stressors and diseases and, and environmental stimuli. Do I have that right? No, I love it, man. I, I, you know, I'm going to steal that metaphor. That was very, very, very good. Okay, and this is, and to tell people, this is when we talk about this kind of thing, it's not bullshit. We have, we have papers to back this up. A, for instance, a paper just came out from Oxford University in the, uh, last year, which looked at the relationship between deuterium levels, depression, and anxiety. Indeed, showing that your that people that are depressed and anxiety have high deuterium levels. As I said, so. There you go. The same way when you look at, when we talk about bacterial infection and viral infection, people with high deuterium levels have higher levels of bacterial infections and viral infections. So it is, you know, it is really, and it's, it is a measure. We love to think, I love to think of deuterium levels and your ability to defeat deuterium as being really a microcosm or a microscope onto how successful you are at living. Hmm. And if you think about that, that's what I love about the, again, what I love about the diagnostics, it tells you where you are. I strive, you know, I mean, I used to really be focused on a lot of it, like exercising and all, well, you don't have, you want to exercise for a reason. And if it makes it better, do it. If it doesn't, don't. We all know, I mean, running a marathon is a great hobby. It's not the most healthy thing in the world we know this. If you want to do it as a hobby, great, but see if it's going to really hurt you. So I love what you just said. And that's, that's a really, really perfect example is at the end of the day, you, you, you are who you are. And what we're giving you ability is to be the best you, you can be. 
And that's really what we do. Just, you know, the, be a better you. And that's it. Yeah. I really wish that we had uh, way more time. And I really wish that we could go way down the rabbit hole and talk about, you know, elevated vibration and biomorphic resonance. But uh, yeah. you got you to gotta know your audience. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is um, – I'm going to take my medicine. I'm going to take my deuterium depletion medicine because we're going to, if, if, if you're open to it, I'd like to talk about the, the, my test results because um, I took the two, uh, I took the spit test and the breath test, which are the two measure, which are the two systems for measuring deuterium. And uh, just to give everybody a, a heads up on how this works, uh, they sent me a packet, uh, a, a package in the mail with like a metal tube that uh, with a breather that I breathed into and then another tube where I collected saliva samples. And uh, let me preface by saying this before we, you know, give me the, give me the harsh reality. Um, I only drink water that's spring gathered. So I don't, I haven't drank um, tap water. I mean, here and there, but I haven't really drank tap water in probably um, oh man, probably six or seven years. Um, it's all gathered from this same spring location, which happens to be just a few minutes from my house. Um, I've been eating ketogenically, uh, for about three years, maybe longer, uh, about 80, 20, you know, I did the slow carb diet for a while. And then I, you know, which was 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking up. Um, you know, um, uh, tubers are okay. And then I switched to the ketogenic approach with a cheat day um, for a couple of years. I don't, I no longer do the cheat day, but I really do try to stick. And there's, there's times where I've measured my, my, uh, my millimolars of uh, uh, my ketones. Um, mm -hmm. I don't do that anymore, but I kind of know when I'm ketosis, when I'm in ketosis, when I'm not just based on my, on my mental clarity and how my body feels. So it, you know, in, in before doing this test and seeing the results, I was thinking, okay, I'm at least going to be in like the normal range. I'm at least going to be like, maybe not the top tip top, uh, uh of this test. Uh, and I'm, and as you can tell, I'm competitive. So like, I hate to lose at anything Q. So, so, um, so when I got the test results back, they showed that, uh, I was in, in not so desirable ranges for a lot of this stuff. Um, I can pull it up and read it. I want to make it easy for people. So there, this, so the first test was the breath deuterium level. The second test was the saliva deuterium level. And from those two tests, you can calculate the ATP production factor, um, and and also calculate the depletion factor with how my how my own physical body is able to to deplete its own, to deplete deuterium um, endogenously. And uh, okay, just tell them how'd I do, Q? No, you do. go ahead. Read the read the All results. Right, so, <laughs> so when it came when it came to the breath deuterium levels, um, uh, under 130 parts per million is uh, is optimal. Um, 130 to 150 is suboptimal, and over this is for the breath deuterium level over 150 is um at risk scary scary scary. Scary. scary scary right and in the breath deuterium level i tested at 143.1 parts per million deuterium in the breath which is suboptimal it's sort of on the um i suppose it's it's about in the middle it's about in the middle of the suboptimal range for the saliva for the saliva deuterium level uh, the same, same measurements, 130, uh, under 130 is, is optimal. <clears throat> 130 to 150 is suboptimal. And I tested at 147.8 for saliva and the ATP production. Uh, I tested, and you're going to have to, you know, explain this after, after I screw up all the science, but, um, under, uh, under 11.4 percent, um, is op or is I'm sorry under eleven under eleven point four percent is sub op is is scary fifty one uh, eleven point four to fifty one is suboptimal and, and anything above fifty one point three in the breath specimen is uh, is 
optimal. And so I'm at the lower end of the suboptimal level. And then the scariest one, I mean, I mean, to talk about a freak out, uh, in, in, in calculating my depletion factor, how, how readily and how effectively I can deplete my own deuterium endogenously, uh, the anything under 4.5%, uh, this is again, breath and saliva, anything under 4.5% is at risk. Four and a half to seven and a half is suboptimal. And anything above seven to seven and a half percent is optimal. And I am at 3.2 parts per million. Again, eating keto, not drinking crappy water. Like I wear blue blocking glasses at night. You know, I've got a positive attitude. You know, I, uh, I meditate. I, uh, you know, I burn sage in my house. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? What is it going to take me? I'm like, what do I have to do? No, well, right. no, Sean. I, I hear it's first the good news and bad news. Right. What your what your data shows, and and to make people understand, so the the breath is a marker for what's in your tissue. I mean, it can be it can be different things in different tissues, but this is really taking it from your your heart and lungs. It's really what we're measuring. So that number one forty three isn't bad, right? That means I can, I can tell from that number that you're eating well. Right. I mean, it's like 143. Yeah, we could tighten it up and probably take from 143 to just playing around with your diet to getting it down into the 130s. So we can say that I would I would say that probably you're lower than 80 percent of people we look at. I mean, you were like you can I could say, yes, you're on keto. You're doing a lot of things right. It's probably the water and the amount of water that you're drinking. Yeah, that, that comes into play that makes it higher. I drink a lot of water. I really do. And that's, and I that, that, that's where it is because, again, that's slowing you down. Or, or you imagine it's just, it's just gunking up the system of the good stuff that you're doing, of the good stuff you're doing. Got and it. I always tell people uh, what you really want to do when you think about drinking is drink water. When you're thirsty, say, oh, I'm thirsty. Think about it and wait five minutes. If you're still thirsty, then drink. Huh, interesting. You know, yeah, you almost have to retrain your because we've been taught so wrong. You have to retrain your body because there's a we have a hormone that's called antidiuretic hormone. And that antidiuretic hormone, as you drink more water, it disappears and uh, and stops you from and 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 makes you it's trying to make you urinate that water out. So you're making it you're 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 making it so it makes you urinate. So you're drinking water. And it's still making you, it is making you get rid of the water. So it doesn't make any sense. But the, the water industry has taught us this crap and we just drink it, you know. Yeah. You know, and so, so no, just you're doing great. If you slow that down, that alone is going to help you a lot. Okay, cool. You know? <clears throat> and it's the same thing too. So, that, so the, the ATP, when you look at the ATP, what that is really saying is that you're, you're not making – that we can, you can improve yourself so much, just dropping your deuterium levels down, period, that your body is now going to be able to make more ATP. And we're just talking about being able to make 50% of the energy that your body can make. If you can make 50% of it, you're, you're a friggin' Superman. You, mean you start to really be healthy because your body may need to make 100% of it sometimes, but it usually doesn't have to. It doesn't, your body's not always going full out. So right now you're in the low end and you're in the low end just because your deuterium levels are too high. Mm -hmm. okay, that's it. So if we can just drop that down, I would say just stop drinking a lot of the extra water. That's going to help a lot. We can tighten up some things to your diet. Now the biggest one is you do so much, man. I love the, I love your diet and your lifestyle and all the things you do, but there's certain things that we have to fix to, so your body starts depleting better. That difference between 143 and 148 isn't enough. You know, for a guy that does so much stuff, it should be much better. And, but what we would do is start to look at things, as I said, we start to we provide solutions. So we start looking at your sleep and not how much you sleep, but how much you're sleeping in REM sleep and deep sleep. And so we fix those pieces, which is where you start to deplete your deuterium. Because real, the way your body works, uh -huh. yeah. Is your body's pretty neat. It takes all this extra deuterium and it puts it in these garbage bags 
that are on your nanomotors. They're literally garbage bags. And at nighttime, it empties those garbage bags and it gets it out of your body. It keeps it there. It doesn't try to get rid of it in the daytime. It does it at night. So if you can't right. sleep, if you don't have enough sleep in a REM cycle and deep sleep, then those, those garbage bags can't be emptied. If they can't be emptied, then the next day of deuterium can't be put into them. And so it starts to go into your body. It's, it's so simple, but huh. that's where, that's where you are. So those are little things that I'm sure you do such a great job with floating and everything else. You do all the right things, except you're, it's like any other biohacker. You do the right things, but you don't have any way to measure if it's working right. to say for sure. And that, that's all. That's an excellent point. And, and um, yeah, and, and it does, it does give me a little bit of hope obviously because I drink, I mean, I drink a ton of water. I drink a lot. I mean, I, I drink easily, easily a gallon a day. Um, t- coffee in the morning, tea at night, you know, I've got, I've got, I think three water bottles here around me here at my, at my desk. So that's one thing. And then I have, I have, you know, I have two small kids and, um, they're up at night sometimes. Yeah. And you know, my, my, probably my cortisol is a little bit high. Um, I don't go to bed probably as early enough as I, as I should. Uh, I did not know that that's when we deplete our deuterium is in the detoxification process when we sleep, huh? Yeah. And that's when, the, so when we talk about the body, the body repairs itself at nighttime during REM and, and deep sleep, but that's really the major thing it's doing. And then in the morning time, you got to give it protein. So yeah, I mean, you really, these things are so important. And you can, even with kids and waking you up, you simply have got to be able to set these things to where you're going to get so much deep sleep. And and as you change, what you'll find is you don't need seven or eight hours of sleep. You might only need five because you're not dirty inside anymore, right? Your body, yeah. your body doesn't, it's, it's cool, man. It's like you, all, this, all this junk is gone. Wake up, dude. Enjoy yourself. But yeah. that's the reason that you, it puts you to sleep. It just wants to, and the reason that you have rapid eye movement is to burn up the extra carbs that are in your body. That's what it's for. It's, and it's papers on that. It's nothing, you know, we always try to make it so black box, but no, it's pretty functional. It's just functional sleep, functional everything else. It's really easy to understand. And you're close. You're doing everything. We just need to read it out better. So for you, I wasn't, when I saw your results, it's no biggie. You just need fine tuning. As yeah. As people that are, 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 you know, are, are, are messed up. <laughs> so yeah. you, you're not that, you're not that. So I would say within four or five weeks, you, you'd be, you'd be a, a Ferrari again, man. That's, Ooh, I like that. There you go. There you go. So less water, um, the deeper, deeper sleep. Uh, and and the less water is going to help with the sleep. Yeah, and we work right. on your breathing. And breathing too, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the proper, again, what we find as we get older and, it's, uh, and we live in this complicated world, we hyperventilate, and you don't know it, but you breathe too, mi- too many times per minute, and you breathe in too much, and that actually keeps your body from releasing oxygen to your tissues. And oxygen binds the deuterium again, to remove it from your body, to make heavy water and get rid of it. So if you're not properly oxygenated, then again, you can't, you can't deplete the turn very well. So those are little easy things for wellness people that we're able to do. And those are the same kind of things we do for cancer patients, for athletes and everybody else, except we have to do it more intensely because their systems are even, their systems are truly broken. And so you have to fix those. And some of them you never can fix their systems, they simply would be on the turn depleted water forever as their way to get to make up for their broken systems. So does the so then the depletion factor, uh, the 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 fourth indicator that I got from my test results, so that that will change, that will improve. And it sounds like, you know, uh, it sounds like less water, deeper sleep, um, even though I'm eating keto. My wife has this rabid sweet tooth. And so there are jelly beans and cookies at my house. And I mean, uh, I, sometimes I do. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I do. Um, and even though I eat in a window and even though I fast every day until, you know, usually noon, I, I usually eat in a window between like noon and eight o'clock at night. Um, 
I have not been diligent about doing extended fasts. And right now I'm actually participating in the carnivore diet month. Cool. Cool. Um, what's your take on, uh, what's your take on the carnivore diet? Well, we are partners in, in Hungary as a, uh, are the, as the paleo medicina, the, the carnivore people. So we have a lot of people on the carnivore diet here. I'm, I'm a carnivore myself. I, you know, if an animal didn't die for me, I don't know what would happen with my meals. But if you, if you look at this again, it's what kind of, I love that if it's how the meat is grown, how, what they eat, like I eat from a farm, which I love these people, Belcampo Meats, there's a shout out to them, that only, that, that only eats grass and the entire time they eat them for, for a minute, hay and things like, but it never drinks river water, it drinks mountain water, all the stock. So it's, it's the lowest we've measured on the planet. Whoa. And it's really, wow. it's really, 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 so very therapeutic. And that kind of food is much more expensive, but it actually fills you up much more. So it's like, it, it does work that way. Uh, so I, I'm a, I'm a I, but at the same time, I will tell everybody I'm, I'm now agno agnostic about diets. I don't want to have that argument because your body doesn't care. <laughs> your body, <laughs> it just doesn't. Give me the hydrogens. That's all it wants. Give me the form that you're going to give it to me. In. So. But I, I prefer myself. I'm a big meat person. I am a big meat person. Yeah. I mean, being, you know, now 20 days in carnivore only, um, you know, I try to eat steaks, grass fed steaks as much as possible. But, you know, I'm also eating a fair amount of eggs and bacon. Um, I can't do any avocado because it's carnivore. So, you know, cheese, cream cheese. And I know that there's, you know, that there's, there's pitfalls there as far as deuterium because of the, uh, it's processed and there's, there's more opportunity for contamination and other fillers and stuff that go into that. But, um, um, yeah. No, I think, it's, you know, I think what I would say, the cool thing is what you're doing. I, I love it. And as your depletion factor gets bigger, the neat thing is you can eat more. It doesn't make it. It's, it's your safety net. You know what you can eat when it goes from that five, to 15 points difference. Then you know, oh, I can do, I can do a lot of things. I don't have to sleep as well. I haven't got to do that's the whole idea. It's it, you know where you are. And so that's so look, we'll just get those little things done. Yeah. So it, before we before I you know ask about some other tips for people to help them begin to eat in a more deuterium depleted way, is there anything else from from my tests besides less water? Um, maybe some more fasting, deeper sleep, and um, reg more regulated breath. Yeah. What about, you know, we had Matt Maruka from Raw Optics yeah. on the podcast a month ago or so, and he was talking about um, Dr. Cruz and, you know, the light diet, so, as he calls it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. again, that's cool. I mean, we talked about that 30 years ago, so it's no big deal. I love, yeah. I love Jack. I think it's, and it's amazing what he's brought to the table. And Matt's a great, great kid. I, I, I really love the, his energy and i love the fact that he's going to take the young young kids are what i love they should be the healthiest people on earth because they, they'll have that information at their fingertips so light is indeed very important that's some of the things that you'll do too uh, but, but but the fundamental thing of this is light can't work without the deuterium levels being right <laughs> you, can't, you can't light can't cure you that can't do it but once your deuterium levels are low light is that thing that can take you to the where you need to go and that's what i you know that's what we always try to explain to people that the quantum ther therapies are fantastic emf mitigation mitigation is fan all those things are true however until you deplete your deuterium and fix those other things they're not important or they're less important or less effective less effective. yeah that's all and i love matt you know i mean again i remember when i was 19 too so, <laughs> so yeah, so, yeah. You know, what can you say but but no yeah. i think it is cool i love light i love it uh i mean obviously the theme here is is you, you can do whatever you want to do uh you can you can you can eat the right way you can think happy thoughts you can you can meditate and but 
the fact of the matter is, unless you know where your deuterium levels are, unless you know how effectively you are at, at, at depleting your own deuterium inside your body, it's not going to have an effect. It's first things first, right? Step one, like yeah. get the deuterium levels down and then we'll talk about the water and then we'll talk, right? Yeah, because again, we spend incredible amounts of money on lab work and I always laugh because it's like the lab work doesn't mean anything if your deuterium levels aren't right. I get, you can change your deuterium levels and all your labs will change. That's it. But you can change all your lab levels and your deuterium levels may not change. So change your deuterium levels. Then you can start, take, then take your labs, all your blood numbers, and then try to fix them. But at least you've got the right baseline because all the, it's a shame to say, but you know, we're getting all these lab numbers from a sick population. They don't mean anything. It's like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make any sense. You're saying like the 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 sort of like desirable levels, the sort of the the yeah, uh huh. huh. So the so the reference, not even optimal levels, but no, quote unquote normal levels of hormones and T cells and all that stuff is based on people who have high levels of deuterium already, who are not optimal. So, yeah, they're not optimal. I mean, they're they're we're we're sick. That's why so many of us are going to get sick yeah. when we get older. So we have to stop fooling ourselves. And I'm a functional medicine believer, but you have to start with the, I believe that the, the, the deuterium test, the determinators, is the fundamental test of every, it's more, it's as important as knowing your glucose, knowing your red blood cells, knowing your weight, because this is the one that tells you, tells you how healthy you are. And what gives you, at least tells you the baseline of how healthy you can. Because your yeah. deuterium levels are high and you can't, you can do all you want to do and you're never going to be healthy. You cannot. Yeah. Do. So one thing in this research, and I want to be mindful of your time. How much, how much more time do you have? Oh, to, anything, uh, anything you need, man. Anything. Oh, sweet. Oh man. Well, you shouldn't have said that, man. I'm never going to let you go. We're going to, I'm going to take this all kinds of places. <laughs> you're going to regret you said that. Uh, one thing that, that I found was, um, uh, some knucklehead on YouTube um, making his own deuterium depleted water <laughs> uh, where he's freezing it. Uh, and because, right, did you, right? <laughs> cause this is what people are going to do. They're, they're obviously going to go to your website and they're going to read up and they're going to learn about it. And then they're going to go to YouTube and they're going to try to hack it. They're going to, yeah. they're going to, oh, God bless them. God bless them. Right. God bless Taking them. their own. Yeah. I, so what this guy was saying was that deuterium freezes at a higher temperature. It freezes earlier. Uh, deuterium, water with deuterium in it freezes earlier than water with, with lower levels of deuterium. So he showed this little demo where he, you're smiling so big, where he's freezing in a little Tupperware. He's freezing cups of water and, and uh, freezing it just barely long enough so that the outside rim of the, of the water is frozen and it's still liquid in the middle. So he crunches it up. He pours the liquid water into another jar and does this a bunch of times. He also takes it outside so that it can receive, um, sun rays to charge it up and poof, there you go. De deuterium depleted water. How, uh, so, yes, it's just, yeah. The laws of physics, he is absolutely right. I mean, you can look that up. Deuterium boils at a different temp, has a different heat point, and has a different boil and a freezing point. God, it is so true. So you can do this, and you can freeze this water, you can do it, and four days later, from a gallon of water, you have a cup of deuterium depleted water that's been depleted two ppm. <laughs> so, so yes, it's deuterium depleted. No, it's not therapeutic. <laughs> so, Got it. So, and we we make the so the we call this fractionation. You know, the body always the water fractionates. If you look in, if you just look in a, if you set a pot of water, just a big jar of water, just on your desk, right, and you leave it there and nothing shakes it. Believe it or not, the deuterium, the heavy amount of deuterium, goes to the bottom. The lighter's at the top. But how, as soon as you pick up the bottle, they're all mixed up again. Because <laughs> they're, they're very, very small. It's a very, very small element. So it makes you laugh. But yes, indeed, it is deuterium depleting. No, it's not deuterium depleted in any range that's going to help you. Got it. Okay. 
So it's that that's all. But it it is true, and it's been out there a long time. And it and I've tried it myself. It is true. But you get two ppm's. Maybe if he's the greatest scientist in the world, he gets four. <laughs> so so why is rainwater uh, 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 low in deuterium? So it's lower uh, in deuterium is what you want to say. It's lower than what's in the groundwater, <clears throat> and that's is rel and that's relative to. So because if you think about again deuterium or uh, protium hydrogen is lighter than deuterium therefore if it's in the clouds it's high up in vapor that means it's deuterium depleted right and as it goes down further down to um to get to the ocean that means it's heavier in in deuterium it's just this fractionation thing so rain is deuterium depleted because it has a lot more to, it has a lot more protein in it than groundwater. But it's not a hundred percent deuterium depleted. It still has deuterium in it. Same Got thing it. with mountains. At the top of a mountain, it's deuterium depleted versus at the bottom of a mountain. At the North Pole and South Pole, there's less deuterium than at the equator. But there's mm -hmm. not, they're, they're not free, they're just the ratio is less. Got it. Can you go? Can you go back to explaining how, how what the process of of deuter you said a seventy five foot yeah. silo where because because there 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 are products you can buy there is deuterium depleted water that you can purchase from 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 places yeah yeah and, yeah. yeah yeah so the so the the main way to de there's to deplete deuterium the one that's the best way uh, is using a distillation column. You know, just, just like you would make distilled water. In this case, it's a very tall distillation column, and the distillation is done thousands of times. It's done under vacuum, so it's a lot of pressure. It's almost like a bomb. So it's done a lot of pressure, and then you are taking those fractionations. And anybody can make the turn to water if they have the money and they want to build a production facility. Another way they do it is using electrolysis, and they put a heavy, you know, they, they use a platinum, uh, a, a, a platinum plate, and they make deuterium that way, right? They make deuterium depleted water that way, where the, the deuterium will stick to the probes, and the free hydrogen will be away from the probes. That you can make it that way except it's a very expensive way because you can't get the deuterium off the platinum once you've done it. So it ah. sounds good at first. And so there may be people out there that make they, there's a, that make uh, these cute little things, they sell the deplete deuterium, and they really do deplete deuterium two or three times. And then they're crowded and they can't be used anymore, and that's why it doesn't work anymore. So, oh, wow. So there are, you know, what I like about... <clears throat> They, they, there are there will be more as we talk more and more there are going to be more and more people different companies sell to turn depleted water and they'll even be able to sell it cheaper in the preventa but i what's great about preventa is that they've done their first the only gmp facility in the world and secondly they've done all the research so all the clinical studies everything's been done with preventa water and i always having come from a drug company before always compare it to generic. Yeah, you can buy a generic drug if you want to. I can't guarantee it's going to work. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to give it to you until this company spends some money to tell me that it works just like the real stuff works. And somebody would say, but Dr. Q, they're both the tear and depleted waters. They should work just as well. I mean, well, I can tell you that Excedrin works better than a generic aspirin. And when it comes to my loved one, I'm going to make sure they get the best medicine that's been tested and I know what the results are going to be. So I go with Preventa. I only work Preventa because I'm going to treat my patients like I treat my loved ones. Can we, is it available for, for purchase? Can I get my hands on some Preventa? Sure. Be in the mail tomorrow. No. Yeah. I mean, it's available for purchase uh, both as both, uh, coming with, with, with as part of the clinic, as part of signature, as a center for deuterium depletion, and buying it directly from Preventa America. So you can do either one. I tell people when it's for wellness and shit and giggles, 
you don't need me. But if you're sick or you want to get better and optimize, that's when you need us. Yeah. Right. That, that's when you need us. And I just, I just love, and I, I would say in the someday I'm going to, we're going to make this so well that we can practically give it away. But right now we can't. Yeah. Cause the way that I think about it is I'm going to start drinking less water flat out and um, it's going to take a minute for me to adjust out of that habit. And I'm also going to have my kids drink a, l- a less water because they follow suit. They see me walking around with a, with a water bottle every day. And you know, they've, they've got water bottles next to their bed and they drink, wake up and drink water while they're sleeping. And, um, and so, so, so some change is needed. And, and in that way, uh, I'm going to introduce some more longer term fasting, drink less water and, uh, in, and it wouldn't hurt, obviously, to have some of this deuterium depleted water so that when I am drinking water, little bit, little bit, little bit, um, it can be the right stuff so that I can make my own water better in, inside my body. So, what, yeah, what, what we do, Sean, actually, I'm going to send you some water so we can, and you can, and we'll take markers to show what difference it's made in you. That's the important part. So we'll, we'll, we'll fix, we'll hook you up. Awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, this is, we're just getting started and, and, and I, and I honestly, like I, I, I'm proud of the fact that we're having this conversation now because this makes so much sense to me. And I really do believe that this is going to be the future of, of medical care, that, that it's going to start here. And so you know, for the record, when you watch this in 10 years and you're like, well, who was talking about it in like the, you know, in 2016, 17, 18, 19, it was like, yeah, this guy, I was talking about it. That's right. The McCormick man, That's right. get it. He, dude, he was way ahead of his time. <laughs> and so in that, in that way to make these changes, um, I think we have to be, we have to be pragmatic. And um, where was I going with that? What, what are some uh, symptoms of people who were once high in deuterium that are now lower in deuterium. What, how, how does their, how does their performance change? Yeah. The, it, it's, it's what I always like to tell people that your body decides what it's going to do with the energy it's going to, to use. So, but in most cases you start to see, it's a really, you start to feel to have more energy and it's energy is not like a caffeinated energy. You just start to feel like younger, you know. It's like, oh, I, I, I just, oh, I remember this feeling, and your cognition becomes clearer, and you just, it just feels, you just feel more like you used to feel. You know what I mean? It's hard to, it, but then as you go on, now those with dysfunction, <clears throat> say if you have AFib, you, you start to see you have less, you have less of these symptoms. So your heart doesn't beat flutter as much, or if you don't have as many seizures, or you start to lose weight, you start to gain muscle. I always say, you, you know, you sit on your butt and you lose, you gain muscle and lose weight. It's the strangest thing because your body just starts to do these things. So you start to, it starts to do, to start changing you slowly. And then that inflammation goes down. So once the inflammation goes down, then it starts to see everything starts to just click. It just clicks into place. Uh, and then so all of a sudden you feel like exercises, uh, or exercising, or, or as, as a lot of clients tell me, all of a sudden you start to have more sex. Nice. And you don't know, you know, I mean, it's, it's you know, they, and that's, they all make you laugh because it's like women and men. It's like, huh, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's interesting, but it does have that effect because now your hormones are healthier. I mean, you know, we, our ancestors, Right now, you're 50, 60, you're put out the passion. Well, these people were living to 100, 200 having kids at that age. Mm. So something's wrong with us, not them. So as you change these things, your whole life, you, 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 it really is anti-aging. You feel, and that's not a joke, you, you literally are a younger person. Mm. And so it is, it is, it is quite a, it's, it's quite a feeling. But energy is the first thing that comes back but your skin starts to look different. It starts to look, you know, you have, you, you, it looks younger. You can't make wrinkles go away, but it just, you don't look as old. Hmm. You don't feel as old. So it's, uh, and I, I would imagine, I can't imagine, we have a couple of people 
work with us now that are 19 years old and I look at them and I, go, I can't imagine what it's going to be like for you in 80 years because they should look about the same. They should be, it should be, it's going to be fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. that is fascinating. That, that, that's got to make any sort of, uh, you know, longevity enthusiast, you know, transhumanist person who's, who wants to live, you know, cause I, and I've, I've said it out loud before, like, I want to live, I want to live to 150. I want to at least make it to 120 and, and not mm-hmm. sitting in a wheelchair for the last 20 years of my life. Like there's, there's, there's some um, centurions in my family that have lived to into their triple digits and based on what I know and how I spend my time as a performance podcast host and keto dude and um, you know, living my life as optimally as possible, this must have, this must be, I mean, again, this goes back to, this must be like the foundation for, for lots of people do have the, have the longevity, uh, folks, um, hitched their wagon to you yet? No, I think just some of them, I think it's difficult because I, especially for them, because, you know, it's, um, they do their things. They're very high. So, yeah, it's, it's not yet. It's going to be, I think it's going to be difficult for them because we make it too simple. I, I really do think yeah. it's going to be difficult. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I mean, uh, most, <laughs> uh, yeah, be careful. Yeah. Well, <laughs> who doesn't love microchips and you know, like a thousand pills a day to get, you know, like that's, it's interesting and fascinating stuff. But if you knew that breathing, drinking this water, drinking a little bit of water, eating high fat, uh, and going outside is really the key. Well, then that's not, that's not as sexy. You know, I've had these conversations like put down the bag of pills. Here's what we're going to do. And then <laughs> maybe to get you the next from 150 to 500, you can put in the chips and do all these other yeah. things then, you know, it is. It's interesting, but it's, you know, and they look good. Now I'm not. It's working for them. I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. You know, whatever they're doing, it's working. But but this is the way to do it. For it's really the fundamental natural way to do step it. one. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that you wished I was going to ask that I haven't? No, man. It's just, it's has been great. I think. Um, like I said, I just want to know the. the people to understand, you know, who we are, what we can, what is, what this is, and that our job is to really spread this, is to spread it out there. And, you know, we understand it as a company or as a, a, a philosophy, we've got to get a lot better at marketing. And I've always, as a scientist and as a doctor, I'm not marketing crazy, but I understand we're going to have to be a lot better at telling our story just so the people that market crap <laughs> don't get away with this. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're going to become much better at marketing. We really are because I'm not going, I'm going to accept that challenge, but this is so important to us. Uh, we've all lost a lot of treasure and loved ones, and there's no reason for people to unnecessarily go through the pains and tribulations that we have because we now have some of the answers, not all of them yet, but some of the answers. And uh, I can die happy just knowing that. That's beautiful. Dr. Q, I can't wait for our, for our follow-up conversation because um, I'm committed. I want to, I want to improve. I want to prove these markers. I want to feel that feeling. You know, I'm 35. I'd love to feel 25 again. Um, Actually, I feel better at 35 than I did at 25. So I want to cool. be my best. I want to be my best 35. And then I want to be my best 135. Um, if, you could, if you could complete this sentence for us to take this thing home, everyone would benefit from knowing? From knowing that the deuterium depletion can keep them healthy. Dr. Q, thank you for joining us on the Optimal Performance Podcast. But thank you, Sean, man. And, you know, live long and live well. Excellent.